Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. UN designates Pakistan-based Abdul Rahman Maki as global terrorist. Protests against inflation, food shortage intensify in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. And Nepal's PM Dehel expands cabinet 12 new ministers, three state ministers sworn in. And now for all the details. The United Nations Security Council on Monday listed Pakistan-based Abdul Rahman Maki as a global terrorist. Maki, who was the second in command of the lashkar e taiba and relative of its founder, Hafiz Said, had earlier escaped the sanction when China put a hold on the joint bid by India and the US at the UNSC. The United Nations Security Council on Monday listed Pakistan-based terrorist Abdul Rahman Makki as a global terrorist under its ISIL, Daesh and Al-Qaeda sanctions committee. The development comes after China last year put a hold on a joint bid by India and the US to add Makki in the sanctions list. Makki is the second in command of lashkar e taiba terror outfit and relative of its founder Hafiz Said. He has been accused of involvement in raising funds, recruiting and radicalizing youth to violence and planning attacks in India, particularly in Jammu and Kashmir. He has also been accused of having involvement in attack on Delhi's Red Fort in 2000 and 26-11 Mumbai attacks in 2008. India and the US had previously listed Makki as a terrorist under their domestic law, with US declaring $2 billion reward for providing information for his location. His son, Uved Rahman Makki, was killed in an operation by Indian security forces in 2017. Threats from terrorist organizations in the region remain high and listings and sanctions by the UN Security Council are an effective tool to curb such threats and dismantle terror infrastructure in the region. India remains committed to pursuing a zero-tolerance approach to terrorism. Meanwhile, in the latest on Tuesday, Indian security forces neutralized two lashkar e taiba terrorists in Badgam area of Jammu and Kashmir territory. The army had set up a mobile vehicle checkpoint during which they ordered a cab to stop. But the occupants opened fire and security forces retaliated, said an army official. India has long accused Pakistan aids and supports terrorists to spread unrest in India, especially in Jammu and Kashmir territory. However, Islamabad denies this allegation. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif in an interview on Tuesday admitted that the country has learned its lesson after three wars with India and stressed that it wants peace. However, his office later in a statement said talks with India can only take place after India reverses its 2019 move to abrogate special status of Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has admitted that the country has learnt its lesson after three wars with India and stressed that it wants peace as he offered Indian counterpart Narendra Modi to have talks over all outstanding issues including Kashmir. In an interview with Al Arabia News Channel telecast by Pakistan's state-run TV on Tuesday, Sharif said he believes the talks with India could be facilitated by the United Arab Emirates. Sharif said he had taken up the issue in his meeting with UAE's president, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, who has good relations with India and can play an important role to bring the two countries on the talking table. The PM said the wars between the two countries brought nothing except misery, poverty and unemployment. However, the Pakistan PM's office later clarified that talks can only take place after India reverses its move to abrogate the special status granted to Jammu and Kashmir. The ties between the two nations have soured since August 2019 when India revoked the autonomous status of its part of Kashmir. The two neighbours earlier got closer to a full-scale war in February 2019 when India launched an airstrike on militant outposts inside Pakistan 
in response to the Pulwama attack by Pakistan-based Jashe Mohammed. There was no official comment on Sharif's statement from the Indian side till the last reports came in. Moving on. Residents in Pakistan-administered Kashmir staged anti-government demonstrations recently as they faced runaway inflation and food shortage. The protesters said that they are unable to make their ends meet owing to the government's policy failures which have resulted in a sharp rise in prices of all essentials. Weeks of anger over food shortage and runaway inflation have snowballed into massive anti-government demonstrations in the illegally occupied regions of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. Protesters from all parts of the occupied regions blocked highways and burned tires recently to express their resentment against the Pakistan government. They said they were unable to make their ends meet owing to the government's policy failures, which have resulted in a sharp rise in prices of all essentials, including food items like flour. Pakistan is going through an unprecedented economic crisis which has essentially manifested in the form of a sudden wheat crisis. However, locals in the illegally occupied regions have claimed that the ripple effects of the crisis are even more worrisome in their regions, as people here have already been discriminated against historically. In news from Nepal, Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dehil on Tuesday expanded his cabinet a week after he won the vote of confidence in the newly elected House of Representatives. In the recent cabinet expansion, Dehil added 12 new ministers along with three state ministers. Nepal's newly elected Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dehil on Tuesday expanded his cabinet a month after he assumed the top office in addition to four ministers and three deputy ministers who took oath alongside the hill, 12 new ministers and three state ministers were sworn in by President Bidya Devi Pandari. The multi-party alliance earlier on Monday had met to discuss over the power-sharing model a week after the hill won the vote of confidence in the parliament. As KP Sharma Uli's CPN UML is the largest party in the alliance, it has got eight ministers and two ministers of state while Dehel's Maoist Center has five ministers and the top office. The other allies, Rashtriya Swatantra Party and Rashtriya Prajatantra Party, holds three ministries each, along with their chairman Rabi Lamichane and Rajendra Lingden holding deputy prime minister office. The new administration faces mounting economic challenges, including high inflation, a decline in foreign exchange reserves as the prices of food and energy imports soar. Nepal, a natural buffer between Asian supergiants India and China, has seen 11 governments since 2008 when its 239-year-old monarchy was abolished and the instability has undermined business and investment. More on news from Nepal. Nepalese authorities on Tuesday sent 48 bodies of the victims of the deadly plane crash in Pokhara to a hospital in capital Kathmandu for autopsies while 22 bodies were being handed over to families. The Yeti Airlines flight with 72 passengers plummeted into steep gorge, smashed into pieces and burst into flames on Sunday. Nepalese officials sent 48 bodies of the victims of a plane crash to the capital Kathmandu on Tuesday to a hospital for autopsies, while 22 bodies were being handed over to families in Pokhara city. The bodies were flown via helicopter from the crash site in Pokhara, where the Yeti Airlines ATR-72 turboprop carrying 72 people crashed in clear weather on Sunday just before landing. Family members of the pilot of the downed flight, Captain Kamal Kesi, were present at the hospital in Kathmandu. <laughs> दूरी रखे को तेरी रखे को निश्चित अवधि में आई रखे को रहामी नेपाली रा और अन्य देश का परिवार जान और ले आना प्रिय सदस्य और ले घुमाए को अवस्था था यो यो चाइने अपुरोने ये छेती हो 
Meanwhile, searchers rappel down the 200 meters deep gorge in Nepal's second biggest city on Tuesday to search for two people still unaccounted for. However, difficult terrain and inclement weather hampered the rescue efforts. Nearly 350 people have died since the year 2000 in plane or helicopter crashes in Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains, including Everest, where sudden weather changes can make for hazardous conditions. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's cabinet has said that it will cut its recurrent budget expenditure by 6% in 2023 as the country battles its worst financial crisis and is seeking IMF support. The island nation has to put its massively indebted public finances in order to unlock a $2.9 billion IMF loan agreed last September. Sri Lanka's cabinet spokesman Bandula Gunavardhana said on Tuesday that the government will cut its recurrent budget expenditure by 6% in 2023 as the country battles its worst financial crisis in seven decades and is seeking support from IMF, International Monetary Fund. Gunavardhana said that under successive governments, Sri Lanka has printed money to bridge the gap between public revenue and expenditure, but due to the financial crisis, and attempts to get support from the IMF, there are restrictions to print money, so the only option is to reduce expenditure. He further added that talks with bilateral lenders, including India and China, to restructure Sri Lanka's debt are progressing well and we are hopeful of finalizing support from the IMF in the first quarter of 2023. Sri Lanka has to put its massively indebted public finances in order to unlock a 2.9 billion US dollar IMF loan that was agreed upon last September. The central bank expects Sri Lanka's economy to record a gradual recovery from the second half of 2023 and to sustain growth momentum beyond that. Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe had earlier warned reforms will be painful as the country strives to increase taxes, to put its public finances in order and work with creditors including India, Japan and China to restructure debt. Hundreds of spectators strong India's southern Madurai on Monday to witness the traditional bull taming festival of Jalikattu. As part of the dangerous sport, participants aim to dominate and tame the bulls and pluck away bundles of money or other treats tied to their specially sharpened horns. Have a look. Hundreds of people gathered in southern India's Madurai district on Monday to witness the ongoing traditional bull taming festival of Jali Kattu. Jali Kattu, which is an Indian version of the Spanish sport, does not aim to kill the bulls, but to dominate and tame them and pluck away bundles of money or other treats tied to their specially sharpened horns. The annual events mark the harvest festival of Pongal. According to media reports, at least one person died and nearly 60 were injured while trying to tame the bulls at the Madurai event. Arrangements, proper barricading has been ensured to ensure that safe participation is ensured for bulls, the bull owners, the players in the arena as well as for the spectators. Right from the assembly point up till the collection point, double barricading with metal barricading has been put so that uh, everybody can enjoy this game in a safe way. Manner. India's top court outlawed Jalikatu in 2014, saying that it is cruel and not in keeping with what it described as the country's non-violent traditions. However, the state government of Tamil Nadu passed the Jalikatu bill in 2017, allowing the conduct of the traditional sport. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. UN designates Pakistan-based Abdul Rahman Maki as global terrorist. Protests against inflation food shortage intensify in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. And Nepal's PM Dehel expands cabinet 12 new ministers, three state ministers sworn in. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.